Hi, and welcome back to Codex. Today we have Francesca Bartolucci from TU Delft. Professor Bartolucci is an expert in applied harmonic analysis. Today she'll tell us about wavelet phase retrieval. Take it away, Francesca. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction and uh, to all the organizers for this uh, uh, nice opportunity to present my, my work here. And uh, so the idea today is I would like to um, to give like an overview on uh, wavelet phase retrieval, which is a problem I've been working in the last couple of months uh, with my collaborators, uh, Rima Laifari from ETH and Matthias Wellershow from uh, uh, University of Maryland. And so I will try to introduce the problem, first of all, and then uh, to give like uh, an overview on uh, like past and uh, new results on the topic. So, and please feel free to interrupt or write on the chat uh, if you have uh, questions. And, uh, okay. So I start like uh, explaining uh, what is a phase retrieval problem. So a phase retrieval problem is simply like a problem where we try to recover a function uh, F from uh, uh, the magnitude of uh, uh, some uh, linear uh, coefficients. So in particular, um, a special case in which we are interested is uh, when these measurements are in the form of the absolute value of scalar products of F with a family of functions, phi i. Uh, in particular, I'm interested in two cases. So the first one is when this family of functions uh, is constructed um, translating and modulating a fixed window phi. And in this case, we refer to this problem as a, a Gabor phase retrieval or phase retrieval for the short time Fourier transform. But today I will talk about uh, uh, the second item here. So when uh, this family of functions here is uh, uh, built by translating and dilating uh, a fixed window, which is called like uh, the wavelet, uh, phi. And uh, so the problem that we want to uh, address today is uh, when and if it is possible to uniquely recover a function f from the absolute value of the scalar products of f with a family of functions, in particular when this family of functions is obtained by translating and dilating a fixed function phi. And uh, like um, when uh, this family of function is obtained by translating and dilating a fixed function phi, actually the scalar product of F with this collection, collection of functions is a well-known object because it's the wavelet transform of the function F. So I will recall uh, the definition of the continuous wavelet transform uh, in this uh, slide. So I denote by phi, a fixed function that I call the analyzing wavelet, and f is just like a function that I want to analyze. And I denote in this way the translation by a parameter b and by dA the uh, dilation, L2 normal, and I take like the L2, L2 normalized uh, dilation. And then the definition of the wavelet transform is as follows. So the wavelet transform of a function f with respect to the analyzing wavelet phi is a function defined on the upper half plane with complex valued and is simply defined as follows. So the wavelet transform of F with respect to phi evaluated in this point BA in the upper half plane is the scalar product of F with the analyzing wavelet phi translated by B and dilated by A. And uh, so this is like how we define the continuous wavelet transform. So you see that the wavelet transform is defined on the entire upper half plane. And a more interesting case uh, situation, also like in, in view of application, is that when we discretize uh, the wavelet transform on uh, a discrete subset of the upper half plane. And uh, so the discrete subset of the 
upper flame that we consider are the so-called hyperbolic lattice. So an hyperbolic lattice in the upper half plane is defined as follows. So we fix beta and alpha, and beta alpha are two parameters that uh, um, um, control the density of this lattice in the upper half plane. And uh, this is actually a natural lattice in the upper half plane, because if you think about the upper half plane, in the upper half plane, we have the hyperbolic geometry. So with respect to the hyperbolic geometry, this is like a regular lattice, where the distance, so if we look at this lattice here, we see that the points becomes closer and closer when they approach uh, the real axis. But actually, if we compute the distance, the hyperbolic distance of these points, the distance, the vertical, uh, and the horizontal distance um, between these points uh, is constant. So this is like a regular lattice in the upper half plane. And uh, we are interested in considering uh, like the wavelet transform restricted to this lattice. So, and restricting the, the wavelet transform to an hyperbolic lattice is uh, equivalent to consider, instead of considering all possible translations and all possible dilations of uh, the analyzing wavelet phi, we only consider a countable number of translations and dilations of the analyzing wavelet phi. And uh, we actually consider as parameters for the translation and the dilation, the translation and dilation that sit on these hyperbolic lattice. So you may think as any point in the hyperbolic lattice as a pair of translations and dilation. And we consider, uh, we build like this family of functions considering translations and dilations of the analyzing wavelet uh, with parameters sitting on this uh, hyperbolic lattice. And uh, such a family of functions is called, uh, what is what is called a wavelet system. And uh, if we now consider the scalar product of a function f with this family of functions, this is nothing but the wavelet transform that we defined before, but just now just restricted to uh, this hyperbolic lattice. So we only have a countable number of values of the uh, wavelet transform. And the natural question is, uh, okay, now I have... Uh, uh, my wavelet transform, so I have only uh, discrete values of my wavelet transform, when uh, these uh, values uh, uniquely determine my function f. So in other words, uh, when uh, the mapping, the maps map, the map mapping f to this collection of uh, uh, values here is uh, injective. And a sufficient condition for injectivity, for instance, is when the wavelet system is a wavelet frame. And a wavelet system is a wavelet frame for a, a subspace of L2 if uh, uh, the following uh, inequalities are satisfied. And this means that the L2 small norm of this sequence of values is uh, the lower bounded and upper bounded by the L2 norm of the function f. In this case, we say that the wavelet system is a wavelet frame for the subspace uh, M. And in this case, you see that a direct consequence of the lower bound here is that uh, these values, so the, the discrete wavelet transform uniquely determines F. And uh, we can generalize uh, the concept of wavelet system and this will be crucial in uh, the presentation of today, to a multi-wavelet system. So instead of considering one, on, one single analyzing wavelet, we can also consider a finite number of analyzing wavelets. So construct, we can construct this family of functions by considering like a finite number of analyzing wavelets, and then considering like translating and dilating version of this finite number of analyzing wavelets. Again, uh, we don't consider all possible translation and dilations, but we restrict uh, uh, to uh, translations and dilations sitting on an hyperbolic lattice, the hyperbolic lattice with parameters beta and alpha, uh, sorry. 
So, and the question again is uh, uh, the same as before. So when this collection of measurements, so these coefficients, these wavelet coefficients with respect now to um, not just one single wavelet, but a finite number of wavelets uniquely determine F. And again, a sufficient condition is uh, uh, when the multi-wavelet system is a multi-wavelet frame. So when uh, uh, my finite number of analyzing wavelets and my parameters beta and alpha are such that these inequalities are satisfied. And again, a direct consequence of the lower bound is that these, frame, these wavelet coefficients here uniquely determine my function f. And uh, this problem like of determining uh, like uh, uh, sufficient conditions on the analyzing wavelet or a finite number of analyzing wavelet and uh, uh, sufficient condition on beta and alpha such that uh, uh, a multi-wavelet system is a multi-wavelet frame is uh, uh, a difficult question. So it's a challenging question to find sufficient condition in general. And uh, actually today we ask an even more challenging question because we are not interested to recovering F from uh, the wavelet coefficients of F, but we suppose that we all also have a loss in the phase. So what we want to do is to answer the following question. So if it is possible to uniquely recover a function f from the absolute value of the wavelet transform of f. So only knowing uh, the absolute value and losing like the phase of the wavelet transform. And, uh, and therefore the problem can be stated as follows. So the wavelet phase retrieval problem. So we want to find uh, triples of the following form. So we want to find an analyzing wavelet. We want to find a closed subspace of L2 and a subset of the upper half plane such that for every two functions F and G in the closed subspace M, if the wavelet transforms of F and G in absolute value with respect to the analyzing wavelet uh, phi is equal on the subset lambda, then I can conclude uh, yes, F and G are equal up to a global phase. So up to a constant with modulus one. So the, the problem in wavelet phase retrieval is uh, if possible to determine such uh, um, triples of analyzing wavelet, subspace of L2 and subset of the upper half plane. And uh, so why here we have uh, like that the two functions are equal up to a global phase. So this is the best we can hope because you see that if two functions are equal up to a global phase, the wavelet transform is a linear operator. Two functions uh, like equal up to a global phase can never be distinguished by the absolute value of the wavelet transform. So there is no hope to distinguish such two functions from the absolute value of the wavelet transform. So this is like the best we can do. So knowing like the wavelet transform magnitude, the best we can hope is to recover F up to a global phase. And uh, determining like solving this problem is uh, um, a difficult problem. And like nowadays in the literature, we only know a uh, few triples that satisfy this condition star. And so I would like uh, to give like an overview about past results and how we try to uh, uh, overcome like some limitations uh, uh, in, uh, in previous results. So the first result I would like to recall is uh, um, a result by uh, Mala and Walsburger about the Cauchy wavelet transform. So in their work, uh, they consider uh, this classical wavelet, which is called uh, Cauchy wavelet, and the expression of the Cauchy wavelet is very simple. So is uh, in, in Fourier domain. So you see that is defined as follows. So P is like just a real number greater than zero. And in this case, we say this is the Cauchy wavelet of order P and is defined as follows. So you see um, is um, in Fourier domain is zero, identically zero 
on the negative real line. And in the positive real line is a, a function that has exponential decay at infinity and goes to zero uh, of order p when omega goes to zero. So this is the uh, Cauchy wavelet uh, uh, of order p. And why is it interesting? Because the uh, wavelet transform uh, with respect to Cauchy wavelets uh, is strictly related to the so-called weighty Bergman spaces. So indeed, uh, uh, we have the following theorem, which is a classical uh, theorem in, wa in wavelet analysis, that uh, the wavelet transform of uh, any uh, function in the RD space, so I denote in this way the RD space of functions in L2 with only positive frequencies. And it is true that up to multiplication by a power of the scale, where the power depends uh, on uh, uh, the order of the Cauchy wavelet. Uh, the wavelet transform up to this multiplication is a function in the weighted Bergman space with weight 2p plus 1, where the weighted Bergman space is defined as follows. So is a, a space of entire orthomorphic functions on the upper half plane uh, satisfying uh, this property, so such that this integral is finite. And this theorem, so, is a link um, between, like, uh, wavelet analysis and uh, uh, complex analysis. And this is crucial, uh, this theorem is crucial for uh, the theorem proved by uh, Malla and Walsburger. So what they are able to prove is that uh, uh, if two functions in the Hardy space are such that the wavelet transform of these two functions f and g with respect to the Cauchy wavelet of order p is equal in absolute value on only two lines, you see only two lines on the upper half plane, then they can conclude that the function f and g are equal up to a global phase. And uh, why this theorem is crucial? is crucial because what they do to prove this result is that if two functions f and g in the RD space uh, satisfy these, so satisfy, uh, so are such that uh, their wavelet transform with respect to the Cauchy wavelet are equal in absolute value on two lines in the upper half plane, then it is true that uh, two, I have two functions up to multiplication with this power of the scale I have two functions, one depending on f and one depending on g uh, in the weighted Bergman space, so two holomorphic functions in the upper half plane that agree in absolute value on two horizontal lines. And what they can prove is that if I have two holomorphic functions in the upper half plane agreeing on two lines, then they are equal up to a global phase. And then they can conclude that the functions f and g because this operator is a unitary operator, uh, also the functions f and g are equal up to a global phase. So they rewrite uh, the phase retrieval problem in uh, as like they, um, uh, yes, they rewrite the, this problem as a problem in, in uh, complex analysis, and then they solve that problem and they can conclude that uh, uh, these functions are unique, are equal up to a global phase. So, uh, this is a very nice uh, uh, result with a very uh, deep proof. And uh, the problem of this theorem is that uh, uh, this theorem is only through, so this property uh, with this link uh, of wavelet analysis and uh, complex analysis is only true for uh, Cauchy wavelets. So we cannot generalize uh, this proof to any other uh, wavelet. And uh, another limitation in these uh, um, a theorem is that uh, we are in a semi-discrete regime. So we only need uh, two scales, but uh, we are not discretizing uh, uh, the translation parameter, only the dilation parameter. So, and uh, another like remark I would like to, to do is that uh, uh, since the Hardy space uh, is uh, isomorphic to uh, the space of L2 functions, real-valued L2 function, one could hope to gain 
like a, a result in wavelet phase retrieval for real valued functions from this result. Uh, but this is not true. So this is not true because it is easy to construct uh, counterexamples of uh, real valued uh, functions that, uh, uh, so for example, if we take a function which is real valued and its Hilbert transform, which is also uh, real valued, then these two functions are not equal up to a global sign, but the wavelet transform with respect to any Cauchy wavelet uh, of F and the Hilbert transform of F is equal actually everywhere on the entire upper half plane. So because sometimes, so in usually in uh, signal processing, uh, in wavelet analysis, um, we, 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 every time we have a result for the hardy space, since the hardy space is isomorphic to the space of real valued functions, so we can uh, rewrite every result for the hardy space to a result uh, for uh, uh, real valued functions. But this is not true um, in, in wavelet phase retrieval. And uh, so this is like a remark I, I wanted to do because our first uh, uh, intuition was, okay, we can uh, build, like we can also obtain a result for real value functions, but this is not true. And uh, is easy to see. So our contribution, so what we tried to do starting from this result was to try to have uh, uh, a uniqueness result, but in a fully discrete setting. So where we can discretize not only uh, the scale parameter, but also uh, the translation parameter. And uh, um, also we would like to have a uniqueness result, not only for functions in the RD space, so function with only positive frequencies, but for uh, real value signals. And uh, this is what we did like in uh, our first uh, uh, paper on wavelet phase retrieval. So what we could prove is that uh, if uh, uh, we consider, we take a wavelet with a finite number of vanishing moments. And with this, I mean that, uh, so a wavelet has a finite number of vanishing moments if the infinitesimal order at zero is finite and in this case equal to L. And uh, then what we can prove is that no matter how uh, dense you take uh, the hyperbolic lattice, if uh, the analyzing wavelet phi has a finite number of vanishing moments, then every two functions, f and g, real valued, such that uh, the wavelet transform of f and g in absolute value is equal on the, on the hyperbolic lattice, then we can conclude that the functions are equal up to a global sign. So, and this is true for every uh, parameters alpha and beta controlling the density of the, of, the, um, of the hyperbolic lattice. So this is true for every uh, discrete, uh, uh, for every wavelet system. If, uh, the analyzing wavelet has a number, a finite number of vanishing moments. So satisfy these for some uh, L. And examples uh, um, of like uh, uh, wavelets uh, with a finite number of vanishing moments are the, for example, the Morley wavelet, which is complex valued, uh, the Mexican hat wavelet, which is the second derivative of the Gaussian and the Poisson wavelet that I will uh, uh, defined later because we'll play a crucial role in our second result. So, uh, but I wanted to uh, give examples of both complex valued wavelets and the real valued wavelets because uh, in this result, uh, as you see, the wavelet may be either complex or real valued. So the signals have to be real valued, but the, the wavelet transform can also be complex valued. So this means that when we take the absolute value of the, the wavelet transform here, so the wavelet transform is complex valued because the, the may be complex valued because the, the, the analyzing wavelet may, may be complex valued. And then here, when we take the absolute value, we don't have like only a loss in the sign, but in the phase. So we're losing a phase, not just a sign. But still we can conclude that the functions are equal up to a global sign.
And so what we we are happy with this result is that uh, uh, with respect to the previous result, we could obtain a uniqueness result in a fully discrete uh, regime because we are discretizing both the scale parameter and the uh, translation. And we are happy also because this result is for uh, the real valued signal themselves and not only for the analytic uh, part. And also, uh, so what we would like to improve is that uh, this is not true for every signals with real values. Uh, but we have to ask the signals to be band limited. And this is like a crucial uh, uh, hypothesis. So if the uh, so we cannot generalize, we tried, but we cannot generalize uh, uh, the techniques that we use to prove uh, uh, this theorem if the two functions f and g are not uh, uh, band limited. Okay, so what we would like to do next is uh, to improve uh, like this uh, third item. So to try uh, to obtain a uniqueness result in wavelet phase retrieval in a fully discrete uh, setting like here, but uh, that uh, is true for any function, uh, real valued function, like without asking any other a priori knowledge on the signals. And uh, so this is like what we can do, but actually at the moment we are able to find such a result not in a wavelet phase retrieval setting, but only in a wavelet sign retrieval setting. So this means that uh, not only the signals are real valued, but the wavelet itself is real valued. So the problem of wavelet phase retrie sign retrieval can be stated as follows. So we look for triples of an analyzing wavelet, real valued analyzing wavelet, a subspace of uh, L2 functions real valued, and a subset of uh, the upper half plane, such that every time I have two functions F and G in this subspace M, and the wavelet transform agree on uh, in absolute value on lambda, then I, I would like to conclude that F and G are equal up to a global sign. And uh, so if we consider uh, the, 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 the analyzing wavelet to be real valued, actually, so we are um, forced to consider subspaces of L2 uh, of real valued functions, because it is very easy to construct, uh, if the analyzing wavelet is real valued, it is very easy to construct counterexamples um, with uh, complex valued signals. So indeed, uh, so suppose phi is indeed uh, like an analyzing wavelet, uh, real valued analyzing wavelet, then it is enough to consider a function, uh, sorry, uh, okay. Uh, it is in, e enough to consider a function with real and imaginary part, not identically zero. Uh, and then I, const I construct G in this way. So considering the real part of F minus I, the imaginary part of F. And then, uh, it is easy to see that the, the wavelet transform of F, I can just rewrite in this way. So splitting the real part and the imaginary part. Uh, the analyzing wavelet here is real valued. So the wavelet transform of the real part is real valued and the wavelet transform of the imaginary part is real valued. So here I can just, uh, uh, since I have the absolute value, I can just change sign. And, but this is exactly the wavelet transform of G. So it's very easy if the analyzing wavelet is real valued to construct counterexample, uh, co complex valued counterexamples. So like we are forced, uh, if we want to uh, prove a uniqueness result and the analyzing wavelet is real valued, we are forced to look at uh, subspaces of real valued uh, functions. And again, uh, before stating our result, I would like first uh, uh, to present like uh, previous results. And this was a result by Alaifari, uh, Dobashi, Gross, and Takur, uh, where they could prove that if uh, uh, the analyzing wavelet is a real valued wavelet and band limited, uh, then there exists uh, beta, and beta uh, in their proof depends on the bandwidth 
of the analyzing wavelet uh, such that uh, if two functions f and g uh, again, real valued function have the exponential decay and uh, uh, are such that the wavelet transform of f and g are equal on ab in absolute value on this hyperbolic lattice where alpha is equal to two and beta is this beta that they, cons they, they construct and dependent on the bandwidth of the analyzing wavelet, then they can conclude that the functions are equal up to a global sign. So when uh, uh, the scale parameter here, the alpha is equal to two, we call uh, this a dyadic uh, wavelet system. So, and they prove this uh, uh, uniqueness result. And uh, again, so this is like a result in the fully discrete regime because uh, we discretize both uh, the translation and the dilation. Uh, but again, here we need some a priori knowledge on the real valued signals. So it is not enough uh, uh, that the signals are real valued, but we also need uh, uh, that the signals have an exponential decay. And also uh, some we need uh, the analyzing wavelet to be band limited. So like uh, our result, uh, now our contribution was uh, to prove uh, a uniqueness result uh, for real valued signals where we don't need any other a priori knowledge on the signals. But to do this, we need to consider a multi-wavelet approach. So instead of considering a discrete, a, a wavelet system with respect to a single analyzing wavelet, we have to consider a multi-wavelet system. So, and uh, the question then, so the problem that uh, uh, we want to investigate is the following. So we want to find uh, triples of this form. So we want to find a finite number of analyzing wavelets, a subspace of real valued signals, and a subset of the upper half plane, such that this is true. So the uh, absolute value of the wavelet transform with respect to this collection of analyzing wavelet uniquely determine up to a global sign uh, the signals, the real valued signals. And uh, to do this, uh, we work uh, with the Poisson wavelet. So we can prove that this is possible. So it is possible to find such a family of uh, um, analyzing wavelets. And uh, to construct this analyzing wavelet, we construct this family of analyzing wavelet considering um, uh, the Poisson wavelet and the Hilbert transform of uh, the Poisson wavelet and the linear combinations of the two. So I want to introduce the Poisson wavelet and uh, uh, you see also, you recognize like the link of the Poisson wavelet with the Cauchy wavelet uh, in the uh, Fourier expression. And indeed the Poisson wavelet is just twice the real part of a Cauchy wavelet and the and then uh, it is easy to see that the Hilbert transform of the Poisson wavelet is just two times the imaginary part of the, the Cauchy wavelet. And this property uh, uh, like is generated by the wavelet transform. So for every real valued signal, the wavelet transform of F with respect to the Poisson wavelet is uh, two times the real part of the Cauchy, the, the wavelet transform of F with respect to the Cauchy wavelet. And the same, so the wavelet transform of F with respect to the Hilbert transform of the Poisson wavelet is minus two times the imaginary part of uh, uh, the wavelet transform, the Cauchy wavelet transform of the function F. So in particular, you see that uh, since they are real parts of uh, an, an holomorphic function, because we saw the theorem that uh, the up to multiplication with the power of the scale, the, the Cauchy wavelet transform is a function in the Bergman space, in a weighted Bergman space. So is an holomorphic function on the upper half plane. Uh, the wavelet transform with respect to the Poisson wavelet and with respect to the Hilbert transform of the Poisson wavelet are real analytic function on the upper half plane. And uh, it is easy uh, to see the following result uh, that uh, the um, 
if I have uh, an, an analyzing wavelet uh, such that the range of the wavelet transform with respect to this analyzing wavelet is uh, um, in the space of the analytic functions, then uh, this is true. So the absolute value of the wavelet transform uniquely determines the function up to a global sign. And then uh, this is true, for example, for the Poisson wavelet and uh, for uh, uh, the Hilbert transform of the Poisson wavelet. And this is true, like if I know the absolute value of the wavelet transform on any open, uh, on any uh, set with positive measure on the upper half plane. So then uh, we see from this result that both for the Poisson wavelet and for the Hilbert transform of the Poisson wavelet, uh, the absolute value of the, the wavelet transform with respect to these wavelets uniquely determines the function up to a global sign. So these are good candidates to get a uniqueness result also in the discrete setting. Because what we don't like of this result is that um, we are not in the discrete setting at all. So we, this, this result is true if omega has positive measure. But what we like of this result is that we don't need any other a priori knowledge on the signals. So, and now we would like starting from this uh, result. So this is a good sign because maybe we can work with the Poisson wavelet and the Hilbert uh, transform of the Poisson wavelet, but we would like to gain a result in the uh, discrete setting. And another clue that maybe the Poisson and the Hilbert uh, transform of the Poisson may work is that uh, starting from this result, we can prove that uh, if we consider the Poisson wavelet and the Hilbert transform of the Poisson wavelet, this is a multi -wave, this multi-wavelet system is a multi-wavelet frame if beta and alpha satisfy this upper bound. So in some sense, if the hyperbolic lattice is dense enough, then the wavelet coefficients with respect to the Poisson wavelet and the Hilbert transform of the Poisson wavelet uniquely determine the functions, real valued functions. And then the intuition is that, okay, maybe if we have further information, so in this case, if we, in this case, if we add another analyzing wavelet, which we will see is the linear combination of the two, then maybe we can gain also a uniqueness result only knowing the absolute value of the wavelet coefficients. And this is true. So if uh, uh, we consider like an hyperbolic lattice where alpha and beta satisfy this upper bound, so if the hyperbolic setting is dense enough, and uh, uh, we consider like three analyzing wavelets, and the analyzing wavelets have to be a linear combination of the Poisson wavelet and the Hilbert transform of the Poisson wavelet, where the coefficients of the linear combination have to be uh, spark vectors, which means that every time I consider two vectors in this collection, they span R2. Then it is true that any two functions, f and g real valued, such that uh, they have the same wavelet coefficients in absolute value, uh, in absolute value with respect to these three wavelets in this collection, then we can conclude that the function are equal up to a global sign. And here I just gave an example that, for example, we can take the Poisson wavelet, the Hilbert transform of the Poisson wavelet and the sum of the two. And this, uh, um, together with this hyperbolic lattice. So it's just an hyperbolic lattice with the parameter alpha and beta satisfying this uh, upper bound. Then this uh, um, enjoys uniqueness in wavelet phase retrieval. So it's a multi-wavelet uh, system that uh, um, such that we, we not only have uniqueness, uh, of course, like without uh, 
uh, the absolute value, but also if we lose a sign, so if we only know the, the, the wavelet transform in absolute value, we still can recover the function up to a global sign. And just to conclude, uh, so this is like a result uh, uh, that we like and that we were hoping for because uh, we, we were able to have uh, at the same time a fully discrete setting and also no a priori knowledge on uh, the functions. And uh, so the, the reason why we have this upper bound, so this is an upper bound that may look a bit strange, but this is because this, we iterate uh, this upper bound on, uh, uh, on the, the density of the hyperbolic lattice from uh, the results by SIP. So SIP completely uh, characterized uh, the sampling uh, set for the weighted Berman spaces. So, and we iterate like these uh, uh, upper bounds by uh, his work. And also uh, uh, this kind of uh, result where uh, a multi-wavelet approach uh, is used uh, was first approved in the uh, in the setting of the short time Fourier transform, so in the wavelet in the phase retrieval for the short time Fourier transform by uh, Philip Gross, Lucas Lear, and Martin Rathmeier in uh, uh, this uh, uh, paper. And uh, so, if you are interested in more details, uh, so these are the two papers uh, that I presented today. So the first two papers. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for uh, your attention. All right, thanks a lot. Let's see, I'm gonna stop the recording before I forget.